Described in the film as an autocorrect experiment, Autocorrect sees three dancers, one in London, one in Brooklyn, New York, and one in Entebbe, Uganda, creatively responding to a poem, shot in black and white, supported with an abstract score, and Saul Williams' lyrical performance of his poem, the dancers move in time with the words, sometimes physicalising what's being described, sometimes moving as though the words are propelling them into motion, providing a staccato beat for them to follow. Each dancer wears a covering over their face. Abdul Abdanger Kinyenya, performing in some scrubland in Entebbe, Uganda, wears material wrapped around his head like a turban and a leather eye mask with ends that protrude into a beak over the bridge of his nose. He wears black shorts and is bare-chested and barefoot as he dances on the uneven ground. Drew Dollars performs in Brooklyn, New York, on a tarmac road in front of an industrial building with a large chimney stack, and also on a patch of grass with views of the Brooklyn Bridge behind him. He wears a gas mask over his face, a grey vest top, black trousers and white trainers. Theophilus O. Bailey Godson performs in central London, on a patch of grass in front of the Houses of Parliament in Westminster, with tourists passing by behind him. He wears a white skull cap, pulled down to his chin and covering his entire face. He is bare-chested, wearing black joggers and black socks. Each dancer has a completely different style of movement. Abdul's style is lyrical and flowing. Drew showcases his contortions and gliding footwork. Theophilus's style is a dynamic blend of crunking and lyrical flowing. Despite all being individual, their passion, energy and musicality gives an overall uniformity to the piece. The poem scores the entire film, so with the creator's consent, the audio description has been placed over any repetitions or extrapolations of the same concept, so that the overall sense of the phrase or line is still discernible to the listener. An autocorrect experiment intercuts shots of three dancers twisting and contorting. Jesus had been quarantined in the garden tomb of Golgotha just outside of Jerusalem. Although publicly crucified just three days before where people had gathered despite the mandate of physical distancing to mourn and cheer his very public execution on the social media platform, which was then an actual platform on a hill called Calvary, he had stocked up on the tightly scrolled toilet paper of the times and had no problem adjusting to the torment of his solitude. In front of a power station, a dancer wearing a gas mask jerks a knee to the side. We plan to eat and excrete, for one doth not shit out nothingness. Papyrus had gone viral with the written word and the act of connecting sounds to symbols. The dancer contorts and entwines their arms. Ancient winter ritual of sitting in caves and staring at rocks. The seasonal replacement of staring over and into bodies of water. Arching back, they ripple arms up to the sky, then a series of gliding steps on the ground. Bodies of water were the first screens and mirrors. But Jesus' execution, like the picnics where southern trees were a strange algorithmic resemblance to guillotines and open squares, where families gathered. Swaying, the dancer hugs themselves tightly and then flings their arms wide. Where street food was born and Evites were word of mouth, Jesus' execution was a main event. With head flopped to one side, they stand still. We move to a desert and a dancer wearing a head wrap. Though it would be incorrect to credit Krishna and Arjuna with inventing pay-per-view, the act of profiting from bloodshed is not new. The spoils of war. Reaching from side to side, the dancer grabs at the air, pulling it towards him. Gold and jewels are forcing women to bear the brunt and grunt of a male riddled pathogen of power has spawned as many industries. On their knees. Children who are then reintroduced to the pathogen through education, religious upbringing, the rewards of belonging, who grow to choose and defend it, evoke and amend it. This is the law of the land. The dancer mimes peering through a telescope. Overseers and officers, the surveyor that led to surveillance. We serve no other god but thee. They fall forward and now we're outside Westminster, a dancer wearing a skull cap over their face. God of sickness, it's death and destiny, sense. God of comedy and tragedy. They reach their hands up in prayer. Is misplaced belief the only sin? Why should we let the rich win? O oh, blessed Lord of Pathogen, is victory in thy ratings? Thrusting arms forward. Can it be received as judgment when the poor, thy greatest victim, spread like religious thought in prison, confine and quarantine our vision? Hunched forward, they mime writing a letter. Times as lifetimes would take many generations to write. Each lived life a letter, a lifeline forming words. Families of sounds combined to spell, a spell. The screen snaps to black. Experiment in reality drama. 
We switch between the three different dancers in their respective locations. The silhouetted figure of the turban dancer standing on a beach. The gas mask dancer contorts their arms behind them as they stare at us. In Westminster, the skull cap dancer arches their body back. In an age where going viral was both a curse and an ambition, we had elected a pathogen. A dancer contorts their arms behind their back. The symptoms were systemic. Police plagued our streets uniformed in synthetic fabrics of authority, infected all they affected. Hospitals were overcrowded servers streaming a live feed through air pipes screened through a nurse's eyes. The virus entered our system like the system we entered at birth. Firewalls were burning crosses. We were not immune, born in a celebrated cell. Touching imaginary walls. Walls and borders were violent fictions. Property and appropriations, vintage algorithms. We were the business of the state. Earth is my hard drive. Break dancing windmills on the sand. We are buried here. Our sacred deposit will blossom from unmarked graves. Rear metal through mainframe program master slave. Lay, lay, lay. As if the technological advancements of the digital age were not rooted in basic analog exploitation. As if the exchange rate of our mortality was not worth its weight in gold. In gold. As if we had not been dying for the system to crash. The dancers lean towards or push away from us. We are the antibodies, the essential workers, powering the circuitry of a corporate patriarchy architecture, the controlled variable of every virus and vaccine for the pathogenic machinations of a science that was never neutral. We owe them nothing. They pronoun they them. They voted for this. One by one, they remove their face covering. They enter the body, the mouth, nose, or by touch. They stick to the surface. They can float in the air for hours after they're already gone. They storm City Hall with assault rifles. They not terrorists. They the police. They want all the smoke. They stare at us defiantly, snap to black. Directed by John Z. Deeb, Assistant Director Jane Sakonya John, Editor Ben Williams, Sound Design Soweto Kinch, Poetry Saul Williams. Dances and Choreographers Drew Dollars, Abdul Abdanger Kinyenya, and Theophilus O. Bailey Godson. Cameras Kima Stadden, Jeff Semaganda, and John Z. D. BCTV, John Z. D. Projects. Sadlerswells.com, BreakingConvention.com Originally commissioned by Sadlerswells Digital Stage